Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studio, it's time for the GNFCC 400 Insider. Connect, build, and grow with the Greater North Fulton Chamber of Commerce. So we'll go ahead and and, uh, start as people are coming in. Um, Good morning. Welcome to the North Fulton Annual Mayor's Appreciation Event. Thank all of you for attending today. We've got a, a very exciting um, event. My name is Trey Ragsdall. I'm with Cosmo Pernamente and also the Government Affairs Chair of North Fulton Chamber. And we look forward to having a great event this morning. Before we get started today, I'd like to recognize our presenting sponsor. Um, I'd like to ask Don Barber, Regional Director of at and to provide some sponsorship remarks. Thank you, Trey, and it's great to see you and great to, to be with everyone this morning on behalf of at and Georgia. It is our pleasure to partner with the Chamber as the presenting sponsor of today's Mayor Appreciation Event. Having worked with many cities in my 24-county region, I have a great deal of appreciation for all of the hard work that our mayors, city councils, and city staffs do. So on behalf of at and I want to say thank you. at and market focus is on giving customers what they want in three key areas. As a broadband connectivity provider, our high-speed fiber and wireless broadband networks connect people and businesses across the U.S. As a software-based entertainment provider, we deliver compelling entertainment experiences through HBO Max and at and TV. The fantastic stories we tell and share on our platforms drive direct customer engagements and create deep emotional connections that can lead to long-lasting customer loyalty. As a modern media company, at and unique blend of businesses work together to provide our customers around the world with connectivity, technology, entertainment, news, advertisement, advertising, and more. To provide a quick snapshot of at and in North Fulton, we have a strong presence with several thousand employees based out of many different locations, including Office North Point, for example, corporate-owned retail stores, switching offices, and work centers throughout the area. These employees represent many functional areas of the business, including sales and retail, network operations, IT, technology development, and many others. North Fulton is very important to AT&T, and we continue to invest and support many different organizations. In addition to the Chamber, we have partnered with organizations such as Sandy Springs Education Force, Roswell Inc., North Fulton Community Charities, Tech Alfreda, the Drake House, Student Leadership Johns Creek, and many others in an effort to support economic development and to give back to the local community. On a bittersweet note, this is my last official event with the company. After almost 40 years, I'm retiring and my last day is tomorrow. I've enjoyed getting to know and working with many of you and wish you all the very best and great success in the future. And once again, on behalf of at and I want to thank the mayors and the cities they represent and very much look forward to their comments here shortly. Thank you. And back to you, Trey. Thank you, Don, for your support, at support, and congratulations on your retirement. Um, I would have had a Thank proclamation you. for you today if I'd known you were retiring your last meeting, so I, we feel honored. Don't worry, there's still time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take care of it. Thank you for all your service all these years, Don, and we look forward to your next chapter in your career. Uh, we'll, at this time, I'd like to recognize our silver sponsor today, which is uh, Georgia Power, and I'd like to ask Misty Prendez to air the manager for North Fulton, North DeKalb, provide a few remarks. Sure. No, thank you, Trey. So, Don, how do I follow that? What What is the prize? But congratulations. You're my cohort in crime. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we will absolutely miss you. We'll have to talk more offline about what this new uh, phase looks like for you. But thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I thought I'd take just a few minutes to talk about the weather. So we're on the heels of this very cold, very chilly weather. And as much as I wish we could be together today, I really am glad that we're getting to be still and uh, and be warm. But I wanted to recognize there's a lot of men and women on behalf of Georgia Power that are working around the clock to keep our our homes warm and our businesses running. 
and they've been doing it in a very challenging, very unprecedented storm season. In fact, we just closed the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, and, and it was very busy for us. We had over 30 named storms this hurricane season, so many storms that the National Hurricane Center ran out of letters to use in the alphabet and resorted to using the Greek alphabet to name some of those, those last couple of storms. But needless to say, our folks have been busy. Um, I wanted to give a special thanks to the mayors and several of the, the business and community leaders on this call because our toughest, biggest challenge um, in the last 10 years came a couple of weeks ago with Hurricane Zeta. We had over 820,000 customers without power across the state. And I leaned on several of you on this call to help us manage expectations and really help us engage the public and help them understand of the safety you know, precautions we had to take and the reasons why uh, it was taking longer than usual just by virtue of the extent of the damage. But we had several thousand troops on the ground working around the clock. We got the power back on in about four to five days, which is much longer than we would have wanted. Um, but again, couldn't have done that without your, your patience, your leadership and your support in all of our North Fulton communities. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for standing with us in a very challenging year, um, standing by and answering the call whenever I've made that call on behalf of our company, and just proud to be your energy partner and super proud to, to be a sponsor and a supporter of the Chamber. Thank you, Trey. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Misty. Thank you for all your, your fellow colleagues at Georgia Power and the EMCs across the region for taking care of all of us uh, this year. So thank you very much. A few housekeeping I also want to thank um, our John Ray and North Fulton Business Radio X for being a sponsor and always uh, uh, showing us the community. Thank you. Um, a few housekeeping items before you start. Everyone is on mute, so please stay mute unless you're speaking. Uh, if you have any questions for our speakers, please use the chat function um, in Zoom, and we'll get to your questions um, in a moment. Now on with the program. It's my pleasure to introduce the three outstanding North Fulton mayors this morning. Uh, first, we'll have the Mayor Jim Goldman, Mayor of City of Alpharetta. So, Mayor, uh, would you like to give us the state of Alpharetta this morning? You'd think I'd know how to unmute myself by now, wouldn't you? Thank you, Trey. I want to want start off by just thanking the chamber. You know, Kelly and, and, and Alan have been a tremendous asset over the past year. It's been an unusual year for sure. But one of the great things that's come out of it is that it has drawn those of us that are, are working to support our communities uh, that much closer and brought us into much more of a working relationship, sometimes with our partners and our fellow communities. And, and so there has been a lot of positives that have come out of it. That, one, Donna, I'm sorry to hear about that, man. It's selfish. I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself, but uh, you've been around in a stable asset and person building relationships in this community for a long time. So congratulations. We appreciate your service to Alpharetta and North Fulton for a long time. Look forward to seeing what you get yourself into next. Um, Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. You're very welcome, sir. I'm honored to have been able to work with you over the last few years, at least. Um, yeah, yeah it, and one, also, since Mayor Bodker and, and Rusty Paul aren't here, that means I get to speak for 45 minutes, because they usually talk too long anyway and tell too many jokes and put too much pressure on me. So that's a lower bar this year, I guess. Um, you know, it, it's been a different year, for sure. And, and one thing, I, as we draw closing 2020, I look back over it and um, there's been a lot of challenges and you all know that. We've all faced it. We faced it in our personal lives. We faced it in our businesses and our organizations um, and, and we faced it in, in our governments and in, in our local communities and things like that. So we won't dwell on that. We're, one thing I've really, as the year draws to a close, have been focusing on are the positives because North Fulton and I brag on Alpharetta a lot, but this whole area is truly special. And in a year like this, while there's so much craziness in the media and there's so many political shenanigans going on that have kept us from really paying attention to the positives in our community too often, I want to talk about that because 
they've been happening. And I know they've been happening in Roswell and Johns Creek and Sandy Springs and all the cities around us. Um, but as I look back over the past year, man, what an amazing area we live in that despite the craziness, despite the turmoil, despite the COVID, the distancing and the health you know, concerns and all that, so many positive things have continued to go on in this community. And maybe they're happening elsewhere in the country or elsewhere in the world, but I just don't think so. When, when, I, when I look at the great things that have been accomplished in this past year, and, and I'll take a few minutes to just talk about some of that and share it with you, because while the press, uh, the local media and things have, have tried to do a good job of keeping people up to date, so many people are focused on other things lately that it kind of gets swept under the rug and we don't take the time to celebrate the positives and the achievements. So I'll start off by just talking about road projects, even amongst our council sometimes here in Alpharetta. We have had so many things going on over the last eight years. That it's hard for newer elected officials even to appreciate how unique the last eight years have been in North Fulton, specifically in Alpharetta. I mean, this is a much different world than it was eight years ago. And, and just for example, some of the road projects, and this is just some of the road projects and things that have been accomplished this year. We finished a complete transformation of Rucker Road, one of our most traveled and most important residential corridor, but a major thoroughfare for people traveling into the city from primarily Roswell, East Cobb, and, and Cherokee County. That whole corridor has been transformed from one that was built up primarily in the 70s and 80s in, in, in a two-lane road that was Fulton County when it was built, um, had no sidewalks and things like that. Now, if you haven't had the opportunity to drive through that area and see what it has become, I, I encourage you to do that someday to look at them, the wide multi-purpose trails on both sides of the road, the street lights, you know, it's just amazing. That, that's probably one of the largest transportation projects ever done in the city of Alpharetta since Westside Parkway, at least. Um, and, and that's quite an accomplishment in any year, much less this year. We've also got other major road projects already underway because of the reduced traffic along Kimball Bridge Road. That Quarter is also being transformed. Those are alone are over $30 million worth of road projects. Of course, the landscapers are outside blowing now. So if that noise is a distraction, I apologize. Hopefully they'll blow through very quickly. Um, so in addition to those, though, they, there's many other road projects that are, we just finished the triple lane that on uh, Wimmer Parkway, the exit. If you're coming north on 400, getting off at Wimmer Parkway, turning left to go west to get to Milton, the city of Milton or the city of Alpharetta along that corridor. This is a great project that just relieved a lot of the congestion in that huge bottleneck to major employers for Milton and the city of Alpharetta. That was a great partnership that started years ago, thanks to the leadership of Senator Brandon Beach, partnership with the city of Alpharetta, North Fulton CID, Fulton County, the Georgia Department of Transportation, and I believe it was the State Road and Toll Authority as well. I hope I didn't leave anybody out, but how often do that many organizations come together to make a, a major impact on our commutes, our residents, and, and the property values, the commercial property values in that quarter? That's a, just another one of the many that are underway now. We've Finally reached agreements between Johns Creek, Forsyth County, and the city of Alpharetta on doubling the capacity for McGinnis Ferry, which will hopefully have a huge impact for all of us in relieving congestion on other cor quarters going east-west between I-85 and uh, Georgia 400. So we've got a long list of transportation projects like that that are underway or have been completed this year. If anything, they weren't slowed down by covid they were actually accelerated because there was less concern about rush hour traffic and there were fewer school buses on the road. Um, in addition to the transportation projects, the city of Alpharetta has also been successful in, in expanding and improving a lot of our park services. 
um, while people have been quarantined, one of the things that has been truly in demand is an opportunity for families and individuals to get outside of their house and, and safely enjoy some fresh air and sunshine and get out and exercise. And so we've finished the first leg of the Alpha Loop connecting Alpharetta City Hall and Avalon. That was huge. That's been something that's been awaiting for years. And we finally were able to do it. We had a big ribbon cutting scheduled. And of course, we haven't had that yet, but we will eventually when it's safe and it's appropriate to do so. We'll come out and celebrate some of these things. But not only did we finish that first connection that we have been working on for years, we also began the next legs of the Alpha Loop which is primarily to connect. It's a multi-purpose trail if you're not familiar with it, much like the Greenway, but this is more of an urban environment to help people connect where they are with where they want to be, the people where they live, the people where they work, to the restaurants, the shops, the parks and different facilities. So we've already begun the next leg of the Alpha Loop, which will come from the post office, if you know where that is on Old Milton Parkway, cross over Old Milton at the red light and extend along the creek bed parallel to Haynes Bridge Road up towards the QT where we'll cross over to the new mixed use development that's taking place behind the QT on DeVore Road and that'll cross around and bring you all the way back to city center. We're also just finished doing a feasibility study for the future extensions which will take the Alpha Loop through that entire corridor over there where the varsity used to be through that area, over to the new mixed use development at North Winds and cross over Haynes Bridge Road to eventually connect with Encore Parkway and the Greenway over across from North Point Mall. So that's already underway. We've had, I, I would say that's probably about a mile and a half to two miles already completed at this point. That's huge. And, and it's a great asset in today's environment, even more so than um, previously, because more people are trying to get out. And since they're working from home quite often, they have an opportunity to take a break and actually get some fresh air. We've also opened up a new park on Wimmer Parkway. It was a huge improvement over a park that was very underutilized at the time on Wimmer Parkway. We've also, if you haven't been through there recently, we've got a tunnel under Wimmer Parkway now. For a long time, the city of Alabama has wanted to connect our Greenway with the Forsyth County Greenway. And so blocks was how do you cross Wilmore Parkway so people don't have to actually cross at a red light or something like that. We've got a tunnel down there and soon as an amenity for all of those office buildings along Wilmore Parkway, people will be able to get out and not only go for a bike ride or a jog or something like that, but eventually connect to the Forsyth County Greenway as well, which will bring almost 20 miles of trails between South Forsyth, City of Alpharetta, and the City of Roswell. A lot of great stuff like that going on. We've opened up a new community center on the east side of town. And believe it or not, the City of Alpharetta has never had an indoor facility east of Georgia 400. And so in com- partnership with the Alpharetta at Isaacs and YMCA, we've actually opened up a new community center Several thousand square feet of space, multi-purpose space. It can be used for meetings, senior activities, a lot of different functions. It's a great space. Encourage all of you, if you haven't seen it, to get over there and take a look because there may be opportunities you or in, in your private lives or in your business lives to use that facility. So we're excited about all of these things. And, and I know there's a lot going on in Fulton County um, the challenge we face will be the transition between what used to be in Alpharetta a year ago and where we're headed. And so I'll just share a little bit of the optimistic future that we do see. We know that next few years are going to be an adjustment for all of us, all of our businesses, all of our organizations and everything like that. A lot of people will continue to work from home. Some of the people who have large office components now, office space components, will probably be scaling back or adjusting that accordingly. The great news that we see and we're hearing from all over the country and all over the world is that because of the impacts of COVID, suburban environments like Alpharetta, like Johns Creek, Roswell, Milton, all the cities in North Fulton are much more desirable now to commercial property owners and investors than they were 12 months ago. 
It, it may seem like a contradiction, but it's not because the things that attracted people into more urban environments a year ago, companies and investors, right now are not necessarily a positive. Quite frankly, a lot of them are, are no longer interested in investing in high-rise office buildings when safety is a concern and access is a concern. So we're getting a lot of feedback from local experts and from investors that are calling, reaching out to us through channels or directly to our community development department to explore what opportunities there are in suburban environments. A lot of that's because of the environments we've created in our cities, because of the great school system we have of Fulton County Schools. But also, it's a great business climate throughout Georgia, and we're blessed to have a business climate. I don't know whether y'all noticed the article, I believe it was in yesterday's Business Chronicle, said that the U.S. Census projects that 289,000 people moved into the state of Georgia last year. That's almost 300,000 people moved from other places in the country or the world to call Georgia home. That's huge in 2020. I mean, we know real estate values have been strong in North Fulton, but that's a pretty good indicator of why. We have a great state. We have a good business climate that continues to thrive, even challenging environments. Our unemployment rates are low. Our property values, residential property values are high. Um, we're in a, a well-positioned space for the future. Probably be a little challenging over the next couple of years as things adjust accordingly. But I'm proud to be working with all of you in a great city, in a great community, in a great area. And uh, I appreciate all you've done throughout the chamber, all the sponsors over the past year. It's been difficult to um, interact with folks that you used to rely on. And I used to be able to see you at the luncheon events and things like that and pick up some tips and information from you. But I appreciate all of you who have reached out to me personally and to our community and have been available when I had to call and ask if you had some insights for me, you've always been there. So thank you. I appreciate it. And God bless you all. It's been an extraordinary year and here's hoping 2021 is a little less extraordinary. Thank you so much, Mayor, for uh, your leadership and your great remarks uh, today. And I encourage everybody for to shop and eat some local. So you got a great, great to see North Fulton, including Alpharetta. So that uh, we'd like to ask the Mayor of Mountain Park, Jim Steele, Mayor Steele, you'd like to give us the state of Mountain Park. Yes, sir. Thank you, Trey. And uh, let, first, let me thank the Chamber for, for holding this event and all the sponsors. I do appreciate it. Um, as most of you know, Mountain Park is not a very large community. We're most, we're just primarily residential. You literally could walk from one side to the other in 10 minutes. So I don't know that I'll use the full amount of my time, but I will tell you it has been a challenging year as, as Jim Gilvin, uh, Mayor Gilvin alluded to, uh, we had three new council members come on board at the beginning of this year. And, um, this was a, a really uh, rough transition for them because they, they were, they had expectations about, how things were supposed to go. And of course that, that went out the window with COVID. Uh, we did manage to, to take the necessary steps to do what we could to protect our citizens and, and uh, put in place uh, measures that would help uh, hopefully minimize the, the effects of COVID here. Uh, at first we had a, a lot of people with differing opinions about whether we should do this or that. And, and it made it a little contentious in the beginning, but ultimately everyone came together and we, we ended up with a community that was cooperative and everybody uh, did pull the sled in the same direction. And, and you could see that uh, people were helping each other. We ended up, uh, most folks um, were fortunate as far as their, their livelihoods and, and things, but there were some in our community that are on fixed incomes and things of this nature that were struggling even more so. Uh, we were able to establish a community food bank that uh, allowed some citizens to, to help others that, that, we're in need. Um, it was a, a really uh, a great feeling to see how, without the city having to get involved, the, the community up, and they did a great job of, of providing that. Uh, there was also a, a group that stepped up to help with uh, utility bills. Some folks were struggling with their utility bills at one point, and uh, a lot of a good citizens 
came to the rescue to help folks meet their 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 obligations as far as the utility bills. Of course, forms that came in here recently, uh, Sally and 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 uh, you know events that that happened here in the latter part of the year, those were really uh, difficult for us because being a heavily wooded community, we lost a lot of trees and we lost power for many many days. Um, we struggle with folks that that couldn't even get out of their houses because of trees and power lines and things around there. And uh, we had ultimately a group that came together of citizens that went around and they helped everyone be able to clear. If they, you know, folks didn't have chainsaws, they came, they cleaned up, they they made it a livable environment again for a lot of folks that otherwise were, were basically stuck. And we certainly uh, appreciate that kind of, of uh, effort by all of our citizens because we are uh, a small community. We're a close knit community. Sometimes we, we, we look at tensions amongst ourselves, but ultimately we, we pull together. And that's, that, was, that was good to see. I know that um, some of the biggest concerns that we have right now are going forward. I know that there's an uptick in current environment with COVID, and folks are genuinely concerned about possibly shutting back down and things of this nature. So, uh, you know, we're... We're just trying to be prepared for what next year may hold for us. I'm like Mayor Gilvin. I hope 2021 is a much better year, and I hope that uh, things do turn the corner eventually and we start getting back to a, a, a good place in the city of Mountain Park. Uh, with that said, I'm going to yield back the rest of my time for Mayor Henry. Thank you, Mayor, uh, for your good remarks and your leadership. And now we'd like to have hear from the Mayor of Roswell, Lori Henry. Mayor? Thank you, Trey. And um, I would like to um, mirror the comments of Mayor Gilvin as well as Mayor Still. One of the things um, that I want to do to begin with is to thank the chamber and thank our business leaders. And also, I would like to thank the other mayors. There have been a lot of silver linings um, that have come out of COVID. And I I have a deep debt of gratitude to folks that have been able to rise above this pandemic and pull together. I'll tell you one great example this last year, and we had the opportunity here as North Fulton mayors to get with, get together with all of the mayors in Fulton County. And I can't speak for the other mayors. Maybe I can, but I think that we have forged friendships and relationships with our sister cities in South Fulton, West Fulton, East Fulton. And because we've always had a great relationship with um, our sister cities in North Fulton. So that has been one of the most gratifying things I think that has come out of COVID is that we pulled together and uh, we came up with solutions and we put aside our differences, our geographical differences in Fulton County. So it, that that is very, very exciting to me. And there are a lot of those stories, as indicated by Mayor Gilvin and Mayor Still. Um, some of the things we've done here in Roswell, early on in March, um, I started the emergency management team here in Roswell. And um, that's basically our leaders in our various departments. Uh, we set up a room in City Hall. And while we had to close City Hall for several months, <clears throat> Um, we had those top-notch people working on a daily basis here in City Hall to make sure that services never missed a beat, uh, our citizens were taken care of, and I know that I can speak for the other um, North Fulton cities as well. And also, I would like to thank Georgia Power because on top of COVID, we also had a hurricane, we've had major weather events, and um, Misty, thank you so much for your um, continued support and also your communication. Um, your communication was key throughout this event and it l- enabled us to reach out to our citizens and give them honest answers about what's going on. So I think that that was a very, very important um, aspect to all of this. And I keep going back to, if you see a theme here, it's communication whether it's communication with our sister cities throughout Fulton County, communication with Fulton County, communication with our business leaders and our chamber 
it's all so, so important. And I think that it's helped to take a bad um, environment and turn it into a very, as positive as we can make it environment. Um, One of the other things that I've done is I started the Business Recovery Task Force, and we pulled together businesses in throughout Roswell, everything from our largest employers to our smallest employers. And uh, we have met regularly on Zoom, and we've done a lot of great things. One of the things that came out of that Business Recovery Task Force is the Come Back Safely campaign. And what our businesses were seeing and what we were seeing as well as our residents and our business or and our um, visitors weren't feeling really comfortable about going out. They weren't sure which businesses were safe to go to, which ones weren't safe to go to. And what we did here in Roswell is uh, we started the Come Back Safely campaign, which um, does several things. One is it assures our residents, visitors, and businesses that we're all um, – using the precautions that we need to use for COVID. So it's mask wearing, it's social distancing, it's hand sanitizing, hand washing. And um, what we've been able to do with Roswell Inc. and our Convention and Visitors Bureau is uh, come up with this campaign where our businesses can sign up for it. And they have a checklist of things that, that they need to do. And our residents, visitors can go on the city website. And I'll tell you why this is so important. And I I know the other mayors will appreciate this. The city never uses the um, breadth of the city's uh, communication power to promote individual businesses. But we are doing that now through the Come Back Safely campaign. So if you're planning on visiting Roswell, or um, if you're a Roswell resident, you can go on the city's website, you can see who signed up for the campaign, and it gives a little added comfort uh, for people to know that these folks are committed to doing these things, they signed the pledge, and it's a comfortable environment for them to visit. So I think that that's, that's been key. We're doing some uh, additional work this week. We're working on some um, videos to get out to the public to, that showcases businesses in the community and and what we can do to help support them because as was said before I believe Trey mentioned it that um, we need we're encouraging people to shop local and um, and also the sister cities in North Fulton we encourage folks to uh, visit our sister cities as well and shopping local is very very important to us um, the other thing that that kind of circled around COVID um, was the racial inequity issues that we have been facing, um, and that came to kind of a head during COVID. So while it wasn't related to COVID, there was still, um, it was kind of that, um, what's the opposite of a perfect storm? It all, it all hit us at, at one time. So not only were we dealing with hurricanes, we're dealing with COVID and we're dealing with racial inequity issues. So I started an advisory committee. We're in the initial phases of that. Uh, we're meeting a, about every two weeks. Um, right now we're going through a, um, a um, educational um, program with our um with the folks that are on the committee, just how did we get here? Where did we come from? And we are preparing to start to have those very, very difficult conversations. And one of the things that I am so proud of with the advisory committee that's advising me is we're building a level of trust with each other that's so important. And that level of trust will allow us to have those very difficult conversations going forward. So that's another silver lining during this COVID time. (coughs) Not related to it, but it it just happened to hit at the same time. Um, Jim mentioned some of the transportation projects. Um, I won't go into them specifically here in Roswell, but I will say that um, I'm telling people that um, for the first time in my life, I can honestly say that I will live to see transportation 
congestion eased in the city of Roswell. And that's exciting. I mean, we've got some major projects going on and that will support our businesses and, um, and our residents as well, because as you all know, up until COVID, the number one complaint we get here in Roswell is transportation. <laughs> Everything is about that commute. So um, we're hoping to use this time wisely, keep those transportation projects um, on track. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the other good news is the fact that our real estate market, I think Jim Gilvin alluded to this in Alpharetta, our real estate market is going strong. Um, we, it is, has amazed me because I was expecting the results, uh, the same type of results from the Great Recession. And we are not seeing that at Roswell at all. Um, our um, business um, opportunities here are growing. Uh, they're not diminishing at all. Uh, we've got it. Uh, and I know that Steve Stroud, Roswell Inc. will tell you that um, if we had more space, uh, that would be a good thing here in Roswell because our space is being maxed out by folks wanting to do business in Roswell, relocating their businesses in Roswell, and growing their businesses in Roswell. And that's very important. We've had some other um, great redevelopment (laughs) and adaptive reuse uh, projects going on in Roswell. Uh, I know many of you have heard about the Southern Post here in Roswell. We call it the Southern Skillet. And uh, that's a major project on Highway 9. uh, The developer did have a little COVID hiccup. Uh, that they put on, they put the project on pause briefly, but they are back in full force. They're um, assigning leases with tenants and uh, they're expecting to start construction there the first quarter of this next year. And um, for me, uh, sooner rather than later, because I'm really looking forward to that project. Another one, and I don't know if you all are, are seeing this out there, it was kind of new to me, but we've got a great adaptive reuse. We've got an empty coals on the east side of Roswell. And we've got a company coming in, a group that's coming in, and it's called Pickle Social. So it's pickleball courts, and they're coming through a conditional use um, process because what they're turning the old coals uh, big box into are in indoor pickleball courts. And they're also converting some of the parking that is in uh, that shopping center into outdoor pickleball courts and events facilities. So, I mean, it's awesome. And, you know, when I first looked at pickle social, I, (laughs) I thought, Oh, what's this have to do with pickles? I'm not quite sure, but um, I was a little behind the times on pickleball. Um, Also, we've got a major German grocery store. Lidl is coming into town. They're mid construction right now. It's Grimes bridge and Holcomb bridge right there behind um, Ola, and um, they have completely demolished an outdated strip shopping center, and they're coming in with 28,000 square feet of a grocery store. And the good news along with that is they'll be employing between 40 and 50 people. So it's it's all good. And these are all of the wonderful things that have happened during COVID. One thing I would like to say in closing is, here in Roswell, and I know other our other North Fulton cities, is our citizens want to be outside. We love being outside. People move to Roswell for the neighborhoods, the schools, and the parks. And, you know, we're hikers, we're bikers. Uh, that's what we all love to do. But the other thing we love is the social events, um, the special events that we normally hold. And we've had to put a lot of those on hold. And, you know, for example, our our um, Youth Day Parade, first time in over 50 years, we did not have our Youth Day Parade event, but we're hoping to be able to do that in, in the spring. So we're not saying never, <laughs> but we are saying that we're putting things on hold and coming through um, with various projects. Um, also, I'll give you another example on how we're, we're kind of morphing on this. And I know we're all doing this is this Saturday is normally when Santa comes to the square and we light the square and a tree and we have great events. So we have children performing. Uh, we have Santa come, he comes in on a fire truck and it's a great event that packs our square. We can't do that this year. So we're holding a 
semi-virtual, semi-in-person event. I'll be, we'll be live streaming it. I'll be reading the night before Christmas um, that will be live stream. And then the folks that want to have their picture, picture taken with Santa um, have had to sign up for a time slot so that we're moving people in and out of the square at, in a safe way. So I think that that is one of the, the downsides of COVID that I've seen is what makes our city's communities are these events that bring us together. And we have had to figure out how we can do that and do it safely. And that's a challenge I believe that we're all having, but you know, we're, we're doing what we can. And um, I am hoping just like you all are hoping that 21 is a new year and we can put 20 behind us and um, bring these events back and bring our um, socialization opportunities back because that is so important. And plus, you know, I want to see, I, I, I don't know what the new normal is going to be, um, but some semblance of normal, I think, is something that we're all craving. So having said that, I wish you all a happy holidays. And thank you again for your leadership in our communities and everything that you're doing uh, for North Fulton in general. Thank you, Mayor Henry. Thank you all the mayors who are uh, a great state of the cities. We're proud of your leadership and looking forward to a great 2021. Um, I'll turn it over to Alan. Thank you, Trey. <clears throat> and thank you, Mayors Henry, Still, and Gilbin. It's been my honor to serve as the board chair for the Greater North Fulton Chamber this year. We are privileged to serve as the regional chamber of commerce for your cities. And you have my assurance our assurance that we will continue our efforts to be an indispensable resource for the businesses in your communities. Your chamber has worked hard in 2020 to be relevant and essential in a changing world. And we have adapted to a very different way of doing our jobs to serve our members in 2020. Our annual board planning session was this past Tuesday and your board has never been more energized and focused on the issues that we have in front of us, and we are looking forward to 2021 as well. So under the leadership of Chair-elect Lindsay Petrini and the Chamber staff under the direction of CEO Callie Boatwright, they remain fully committed to continuing to do what we do for you in 2021. I'd like to echo Trey's comments and Mayor Gilman's comments on a thank you to Don Barber. Don, not just the Greater North Fulton Chamber, but the entire region You've paid your dues and you've made us all better. So we wish you well and we hope that you won't be a stranger. So it looks like we have a few minutes uh, of time left. So I'd like to turn the program over to our CEO, Callie Boatwright, for um, facilitating some questions. I see several in the chat box. So, Callie, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it very much. Um, I want to echo the sentiments. If you look in our chat box, there are a number of people congratulating Don Barber. Um, I worked with Don when I was in Douglas County as the chamber president there and um, for a long time have got to see all the professionalism he brings both to AT&T and to all the chambers he's involved in. So the fact that his last um, duty as an AT&T employee happens to be with this chamber and at this event, I think is, is most important. And I just want to thank Don and um, and wish him the best, of course, as he moves forward. I also want to thank um, our mayors who spoke with us today. I know that in March, when uh, when COVID began and all this began happening as a chamber president, um, I wondered how I was going to be able to react and, and get all the information necessary to our businesses. Um, what I can't imagine is having responsibility for an entire municipality and having that same sense of obligation and concern for for your your own city. And I know the, all three of you well enough to know that um, it was heavy on your heart and you have done such an exceptional job. I'm very proud to serve with all three of you. I'm very, very excited to see how we come out of this. Um, as you all mentioned, North Fulton has fared better than than most communities um, in respect to uh, the pandemic and economic realities, um, the back end of this. And so we are truly blessed to live in a region like North Fulton and certainly like each of your cities. 
I want to um, say thank you to everyone who joined us today. We always try to allow you some time before your next uh, Zoom call, if you will. So I'm going to give you all about 10 minutes back in your day. Again, mayors, thank you. Uh, as we conclude today's event, I also want to thank our um our sponsors, uh, especially AT&T is our naming sponsor in Georgia Power Misty. Thank you so much for your tremendous support. John Ray and North Fulton Business Radio X have been great um, since this began, it being our media sponsor and allowing us to put everything out, not just through Zoom, but obviously to uh, our podcast audience. So we appreciate that very much. Uh, this chamber has had more than 150 Zoom um, activities, webinars since all this began. Um, I know that we're wrapping up the end of the year, but we know that those will continue in the new year. So we hope that all of you will stay tuned for all the exciting things that we have coming next year. We appreciate all of you joining us today for this North Fulton Mayor's Appreciation Event. To learn more about our chamber events and programs, please visit our website at gnfcc.com. We hope that you enjoy your holiday season. Have a wonderful afternoon. We are adjourned.